There we are. Okay. Today we're going to attempt to install a new padded dash that we just got from 914 Rubber. This is going to be kind of a tutorial. I've seen somebody else do this out of the car and put it on YouTube and uh, it, it's very, yeah, it's fairly easy to do. But we're going to go ahead and do it document it. Um, you can see what I have done so far is I've removed the kick pad, the knee pad, from the bottom of the dashboard. That's simple. There's five screws under the bottom. Over on the side there's a little plastic uh, butt that you pull out and then there's screws inside. So here's the part right here. This is the, uh, the knee pad. And there are one, two, three, four, five screws and then of course what we said inside there's a little button here you can pull out on both the drivers and passenger side and there are screws in there that go to the side of the dash then this uh, unit just slips right out there's not much to that now inside the dash on the top uh, there's about five or seven screws something like that in there and they are underneath once you pull this pad out the knee pad you can get to one screw right here in the very corner through uh, through the vent hole it's going to have uh, 13 millimeter nuts on it. Some of these are going to be plastic, some of these are going to be metal. And uh, they're really only finger tight. If you get a socket or something in there that can turn it, you can, you can usually just loosen it by your fingers. You will need to take out the instrument cluster, the, uh, the face plate for that. That's real simple. There's four screws in that, one, two, and then up there, three, four. And once you get it out, if you'll slide your gauges forward, they're just held in by these rubber uh, beauty rings. If you slide your gauge forward, then you can pull this rubber beauty ring off over the front, and the gauges will actually slide right back in through the same hole. Real simple. And uh, then you can uh, take your cluster out, your bezel, whatever it is you want to call it, uh, you can take that out. Then there'll be a couple of screws up in underneath and another screw over in here. And this whole dash will come out. Now I haven't decided yet. We may have to pull off these pillar covers. But if we do, there's one, two, uh, looks like there's only two of those little buttons to pull. And a couple of screws in there. And then these, these pop back and off. So it shouldn't be too hard. Now, while you're at it, if your cluster is all nasty looking as mine was, you know, this might be a good time to uh, paint it. I need kind of a speckle finish on mine. I don't know if this is going to work that well, but I'm going to attempt to do it with a little bit of uh, truck bed liner to give the uh, splatter look. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and paint it a gloss black or something. If it doesn't work, I'll sand it down and go get some crinkle paint. Okay, back into the, uh, into the inside. Okay, I knew there was another screw in here. Now, if you see, I pulled out the little plastic caps. There's the, where the third screw was up underneath by the sun visor. Pull out these three little plastic caps. You will need a, a fine tip to fill up. Uh, I believe it's called a Prince uh, point on these. Take out these three screws. Your uh, uh, target seal at the top you can pull back just a hair. And then this pillar will pull up and out, exposing the pillar. Now, I did find a couple other more, a uh, couple other uh, nuts inside one on each side of the, uh, the 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 bezel for the gauge those two bolts inside here are probably the hardest to get to you can get them through the front through the bezel but you're going to really have to bend your wrist to almost be a, a contortionist probably the easiest way to get to those two bolts is with a long extension and uh, going in um, from uh, below the dash and I should have mentioned this earlier, you're going to have to move your, remove your um, fuse panel and obviously you should disconnect the battery before starting any of this work. So uh, you don't want to short any of this thing out and have to replace all the electrical wires. So we're going to move to the other side, take out that uh, pillar cover, and then I'll see if I've missed any bolts, but then this dash should lift right out. Okay, I don't know how well you can see this. There's the tachometer, no oh, speedometer. At the back of the instrument bezel, there's a channel against the uh, firewall. 
and there's two nuts in in there which frankly you can barely get your fingers in there there's no way in the world you're getting a socket in there about the only thing that you can do is take an open-ended wrench and go up at an angle and break those loose. So like I said, most of these are not really tight. They're pretty much finger tight. You can't necessarily bust it loose with your finger. But once you get the nut turned just a little bit, you can go ahead and remove the rest away with your finger. So two of them in there, these are gonna be the absolute worst ones to get out. And I believe that's about it. And we should be able to lift the dash off. Okay, so like I said, th there is a certain amount that uh, of laying on your back on the floor reaching up underneath the dash and stuff you're almost gonna have to be a contortionist to do this but I believe I have all the bolts I don't know there was like one two three four five six maybe about eight of these nuts that had to be loosened and now if everything works right I should be able to pull the dash it feels like they're made nope there it is and there is the dash. Now, from this angle, I don't know if you can see the, the uh, here's, this is where one of those nuts was, and this is where the other one is behind the bezel. So you can see what a pain in the ass that is to get to. But at least we got it. Now I can clean up my mess here. Look at all this garbage up there. Uh, we'll clean that up. And I am going to attempt, I don't know if I can pull it off or not, but I really would love to change this seal up here along the front. That may have to wait for the window to come out. But I've got a cracked windshield anyway, so that's going to happen. All right, we'll clean that up, and uh, we'll put the new dash in. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit off the beaten track, beaten path right now. Um, I've got the material, so while I've got the dash and the knee pad and everything off, my old dash face was really nasty looking. It's all dried and peeled and stuff. So we've got the material. We're going to put a brand new uh, material, the basket weave style dash face back on here before we put the dash top and, and everything back together. So we've got it all masked out. Let's just sprayed it with a contact cement, uh, letting it dry. And uh, in a few moments, I'll stick that on. We'll see how that works. All right, um, moving on, we finished with the replacement of the vinyl on the dash face. And so we're about ready to go ahead and put in the um, dash topper now. Okay, now, here are the two dashes side by side. This is the old one. As you can see, obviously, numerous cracks. That's just the way it goes. This is the new 914 rubber dash. Um, an excellent copy. It looks exactly like uh, the same type of vinyl. We'll turn it over. This is the old one. There is some metal in there. There is plastic bolts. There is a vinyl on there. This is the new one. However, this does not appear to be, it has got the same bolts in the same places. You can see how much of a pain in the ass it is to get some of those out. You know, the nylon nuts and, these, and uh, 914 rubber supply, all the nuts. But, this old dash looks like a vinyl over a foam. This new dash, to me, looks more like an entire rubberized or rubber dash. So, I don't foresee cracking issues and peeling issues in the future. So I think that this was a good investment. So we're going to go ahead and stick the dash back in now. All right, here's the trick. I'm trying to film. So I'm going to see if I can slip this baby in one-handed. See how it works. Ugh. Doesn't appear that I'm going to be able to. Not in holding camera. Oh, there we are. That's that. Got the back there. Got the side there. All we need is this side. And we're not quite lining up what seems to be the problem. That goes there. Ah. 
let's see. I think we're going to have to use a little bit of finesse. Okay. I will admit it is two handed job, but there it is. It covers over the material nicely, fits the dash nicely. Uh, we've got obviously a few more things to screw back in, but it does fit. We're going to look at the other side. And yeah, we have to. Uh, reach in and get all the nuts and stuff bolted in but for the most part it is a nice brand new uncracked dash and, a, and an excellent fit okay the uh, dash is pretty much put back together I've got a wire hanging I gotta figure out what that is um, the radios installed the defroster all the all the buttons switches are back installed gauges are still hanging out but it's time to put on the, uh, the knee pad. Now when I covered mine, these things came with some funky sheet metal that was like looked like it was hand cut out with aviation snips, tin snips, and then glued in pieces over it. And you could see all the splits in there. That just, I don't, I'm not going in concourse, so I didn't like all that crap. I thought it looked pretty cheesy. So I basically covered my dash with one piece of material uh, and I just trimmed it off at the bottom here the, of the actual metal edge. The knee pad will cover all of that, so it'll be one continuous sheet now, and not with all these splits and peeling. And and this way, the the upper dash, I went up to the top of the dash with a with a facing material, and it covered that upper dash too. So all we have left is slip in the. Uh, knee pad and screw it in and that's that's pretty much uh, how it comes out it um, the dash was a perfect fit 914 rubber did an excellent job on that I will tell you it's a lot easier to get it out than it is to put it back in just for the fact that some of these nuts that, that hold it down inside are just impossible to get to it's about the only way to do it is with a, a magnet and then you can kind of sneak your finger in and turn the nut, but sometimes the spaces to get a finger or two fingers in there are just impossible. But that's it. Dash installed from 914 rubber.